Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Shallu la ilaha illallah 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 Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya ar
even when I was younger coming up, there was actually a song, it's not actually the same thing, where this person said he wants him a gangster, B word. And a lot of people actually got caught up into that. They want the girlfriend to hold the gun for them. They want the girlfriend to do everything that they're doing. So in short, they wanted a man with a woman's private parts. Similar but not the same thing. A lot of us have this in our head. I want me a ride or die. I want a sister that's loyal. That's one characteristic of a, of, of a ride or die sister. A sister that's loyal. This is what I want. And I think this is important that we look into it so we can begin to identify and filter out, filter out some of the things we may have going on in our subconscious. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in a well-known hadith, he said, that women are married for four reasons. Women are married for four reasons. Nimaliha. Women are married for their wealth. Mind you, the hadith is not saying that you should marry women for four reasons. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making an observation. Tunkahu Mar'atu li arba'i. Women are married for four reasons. Limaliha for her wealth. Wali Hasabiha for her noble lineage or her family. Wali Jamaliha and for her beauty. Wali Diniha. And for her deen, generally speaking, this, these are four reasons why women are married. And then he said, then he said, deen yadak. Marry the woman with deen and you will be successful. Marry the woman with deen and you will be successful. I should insert here that when somebody quote-unquote has deen is not synonymous, is not the same as saying that somebody knows deen. This is something that many people get mixed up. Knowing the deen and being a person of the deen or having deen are two different things. You can be ignorant of the details and the technical aspects of the dean and still have more dean than somebody who's a chef. Well, there are non-Muslims who know the dean better than a lot of us. Do they have dean? Obviously not. They're not Muslim. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, marry someone with dean and you will be successful, He's not talking about somebody that may know a lot of deen. The sister should look for, to marry somebody with deen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith in Tirmidhi, also narrated by Abu Hurairah, just like this hadith we quoted, that he said, إِذَا قَتَبَ رَيْجُنُ مَنْ تَرْدَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَكُلُكُهُ فَزَوِّجُوا that if somebody proposes to you and you are pleased with their deen and their character, marry him. Marry him. And as a side note, this hadith, the Prophet Wasallam is not speaking directly to women. The Prophet Wasallam is speaking to men who are in charge of women. The fathers, the wakils, the walis. Those who are responsible for uh, making sure that the women are protected. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, illa bi wali. That there's no marriage, there's no wedding, except with the wali. Then after saying this, that if somebody comes to you with a proposal, i.e. for your daughter, your sister, whoever the sister is, and you're pleased with his deen and his character, 
It didn't say his knowledge and his character, knowledge of the deen, two different things. Deen and his character, for we do marry him, a command from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't do this, there will be major fitna in the earth and corruption will be widespread. <coughs> Again, emphasis put on deen. When you see a brother with deen, What's one indication that someone having deen may not necessarily have all the knowledge of, in the world? Because this is, when, when this conversation comes up, especially amongst women, and then you introduce the prospect of a new Muslim, a new Shahada. Some of them say, you, brother, you can't marry her. Why? Because she don't have no deen. She don't know anything. She just took shahada. He's supposed to marry for deen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married Juwaylina, who was a new shahada. She didn't know deen, but she was a religious person. She had taqwa. Brand new Muslim. She's from Bani Mustalak. The tribe who plan to attack the Muslims in Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was informed about the attack and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam attacked them first and caught them off guard. They took prisoners. She was one of the prisoners. She was the daughter of the chief of the tribe. She wanted to meet with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was a right hand possession. She was a prisoner of war. She was trying to draft Mukataba, a slave document. In other words, I want to negotiate my freedom. What do I have to do to get free? And so she was drafting this document and she went to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who wasn't there at the time. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her answered the door. She asked for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha commented, she said, I looked at her and I saw that she was beautiful. And I began to dislike her immediately. Because I knew if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw her, he would see what I'm seeing and he want to marry her. Later on she did meet with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Aisha knows her husband. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well how about you know, you take Shahada, I free you, and then we get married. And she agreed to that. New Shahada. It's the only reason why we mention this hadith. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, saw that she had deen. Doesn't necessarily mean have a lot of knowledge of the deen. How many people we know have a lot of knowledge of the deen, but don't practice it? They know what is right. They know they shouldn't be doing this or shouldn't be doing that, but they do it anyway. Does that person have deen, or do they know deen? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, marry the one with deen, and you will be successful. Marry the woman with deen, and you will be successful. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa bila alameen wa afdulu salat wa alhamu taslim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa radiyallahu ta'ala ana sadid tabi'in wa ulema al-amaleen wa a'imatul arabatul mujtahideen wa muqalideen bin al-yumudin amma ba'd and Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha zawj al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قالت كان نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا ذكر خديجة أثنى عليها فأحسن أثناء قالت فقلت يوما فقلت ما أكثر ما تذكر ما تذكرها همراء شدقي قد أبدلك الله عز وجل بها خيرا منها 
Aisha narrated, she said that the Prophet وسلم, used to often remember, think about Khadijah a lot and mention her often and praise her a lot. And one day this happened and Aisha said that she became jealous. But what you? I became jealous. Let's stop right there for a minute. This is why these Sira classes that Dumuji mentioned is very important. These Sira videos that we're going to be watching every uh, uh, on Yom Juma at 7:30, inshallah, after Isha. It's very important that we become intimately familiar with. The life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his marriages and how he lived his life. See, Khadijah was the first wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were married even before his prophethood became manifest, i.e. before he became a prophet. She, he was 25 and she was 40. They were 15 years difference in age. Khadijah died in Mecca. She never made it to Medina. She never made the Hijrah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married Aisha and many other women uh, like Sauda. He married Sauda first after Khadijah died and then he married Aisha. Aisha was the only uh, uh, virgin that he married. And so I have to mention these things just to give you a little context. <coughs> So she says she became jealous. He's always mentioning Khadijah. Just the slightest thing would remind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Khadijah. And he was very emotional and he loved Khadijah a lot. So Aisha said, why do you always have to remember this old lady that you used to be married to? And she, and she said, Hamra'a should I mean, literally means red gums. Well, literally, this woman, this old lady, she was toothless. She ain't had no teeth in her mouth. And you remember, all, why you gotta remember her all the time? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already replaced her, Abdallah, Abdallah, has already replaced her for you with someone who's better than her. That's why Aisha said. And this particular narration, you can find in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, but you find similar narrations in Bukhari and Muslim and all the famous, uh, well-known books of Hadith. And I think it's amazing and it's beautiful because Aisha is indicating herself, but look at her, the words that she used. She didn't say, Allah had replaced her with me and I'm better than her like equating herself with the shaitan, because that's what will, what will happen, because shaitan's an anachidal mental, I'm better than him. Allah replaced her with someone better than her. Could have been one of his other wives she was referring to. Just even the wording is beautiful. Even in her jealousy, she don't cross the line. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the part that I want you to pay attention to. <coughs> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma abdala lillahu azza wa jalla taylan minha. Allah did not replace her for, with someone that's better than her. In other words, Allah did not replace her. Allah did never gave me nobody better than her. No, no, no one can talk Khadijah. And then he said, she believed in me when the other people rejected me. What do we start off talking about? Ride or die, sister. Or ride or die, sister. You want a ride or die, sister? This is the blueprint right here. Khadijah, radiallahu ta'ala and I. That's the blueprint. And look at even the terminology in the slang. Ride. What's when you ride and you're going somewhere? You have a mission. You have a goal. You have a destination. 
You're not you're not a porch monkey. You're not just chilling. What you doing? Just said, I don't know. You know, just hanging out. Why you want to get married? I don't know. You want to get married? You know, why, why would anybody want to get married? No, you about something. You want to achieve certain things in this life before you die. You going somewhere. You have a game plan. Even if it ain't clear, you know you're trying to go someplace. When you riding, you going someplace. You're going from point A to point B. Unless you're a person that likes to waste gas and just ride around the hood. We got plenty of people, people like that. Just get in. Where we going? Just ride. That's not going to last too long. So even if you say, I'm a ride. I'm, I'm, I'm riding with you. I'm going with you. Even if you're on a bike, you're going somewhere. A skateboard. You ride. You're going someplace. You want this woman to ride with you. This is important. This indicates if you want your wife to be a rider or your future wife to be a rider, where are you going? Why would she ride with you? You need company on the porch sitting there and not going nowhere? What are you about? He had a mission. Allah gave him a mission. Allah made him a prophet. We are his followers. We follow him. We should not be living aimlessly through life. That's why you see leaders and people who are about something, who are dedicated to a cause, whatever that cause is, they can't just marry anybody. They need a ride or die sister. Because if you get with a sister, you marry a sister who's not a ride or die sister, guess what? She's going to sabotage your trip. You're going to stop at the gas station? You cool? Yeah, cool. I don't need nothing. You're going to get gas? You're going to pull off and a mile away from the gas station? I got to go to the bathroom and I'm hungry. We just left the gas station. And the fool, what's wrong with you? Well, I don't know. She's going to make the ride miserable. She's going to be complaining. She's going to dirty up the car. She's going to do a whole lot of other things to sabotage the trip. She doesn't care about the mission or the journey or you or the car. She cares about herself. I wasn't hungry two minutes ago. I'm hungry now. Pull up. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says she believed in me when the people disbelieved in me. And you have to understand Khadijah when we say these things. Do you know that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he became a prophet, and mind you, Khadijah was his boss. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was employed by Khadijah. He worked for her. She was a traitor. She was a tajida. And she, he was like his, uh, his, her top traitor. She would, he would act on her, on her behalf. And Khadijah, it wasn't as if she wasn't a woman that nobody wanted. A whole lot of people tried to marry her. And she turned them all down. And then she took notice of the Prophet Wasallam, one of her employees. And she didn't play cat and mouse or, you know, do a lot of things that, you know, is common nowadays. She sent someone to propose to him on her behalf. And the Prophet wasallam accepted. While they were married, the Prophet wasallam used to do what's called tahannuf. It's like, I don't, I can't give, I can't really give an English word or something to uh, do it justice, but I would say intense meditation. He would go to the cave Hira and contemplate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for long periods of time. And then revelation came to him during this state. And we we know, we should know how that came about. Angel Jibril came to him in his true form, covering the whole horizon. And squeezed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so tight, he said that he felt as if his rib cage was collapsing on each other. Like the ribs from one side will go to the other side. And ancient Jibril would say, Iqra, read. And you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's Nabi al-Ummi. 
He's an unlettered prophet. He doesn't know how to read words off of a paper. He said, no, I'm a decline. What should I read? Oh, I cannot read. How do you translate that? I cannot read. And this happened several times until the first few, uh, five ayat of Surah uh, Iqra was uh, given to him. Read in the name of your Lord. He came back to, he came back home. And he didn't know how to process what just happened to him. <coughs> he told his wife Khadija, Zambi Looney, Zambi Looney, cover me up, cover me up. He was in a per period of witness. He didn't know it was, it was a traumatic experience. She didn't say, and word, what's wrong with you, man? You cover, you cover yourself up. She didn't say that. She covered him up. She told him, he told her what happened to him. I think I'm going crazy. What did she say at that moment? At that moment when he told her what happened to her. She said, you're a beautiful person. You feed the poor. You're nice to the neighbors. You're this. She enumerated all of his good qualities and said, Allah will not reward you with evil because you're a good person. Allah won't do that to you. This is part of what the Prophet ﷺ was talking about when he said that she believed in me when the people disbelieved in me. Then she didn't stop there. When he calmed down, she went to her cousin, Waraka bin Nufail, who was one of the Hunafa, one of those people who were looking for the true religion of Abraham. And she informed him that her husband, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had an experience. I need you to hear what he has to say. And when they talked, he informed him, he said, it appears that you were visited by, and he used the word, Namus, the same angel that came to Prophet Musa, Prophet Moses. He says, uh, Allah made you a Allah, it seems like Allah made you a prophet. And when your prophethood manifests, I'm old now, but I wish I could be alive when the people would throw you out. You're like, what? What do you mean people throw me out? Basically, I'm cool with everybody. Why would the people want to kick me out of my own city? He said, when you come with a message like the one you're going to have to come with, the people are going to throw you out. They're going to turn on you. They're going to flip on you. So look at what Khadija did. She already believed in him, but she supported him from another route. Somebody that has a little bit more knowledge of the scripture. Yeah, let's see what he has to say about it. This Khadija. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued. Wa sadaqani wa sadaqatani idha katabani nasu. That she verified my truthfulness when the people call me a liar. Now, when we, I'm, I'm isolating these and I'm breaking this down because we should also be looking at our, talking to the brothers now, we should be looking at our spouses or our potential spouses in light of somebody like Khadija, but we also should be looking at ourselves in our comparison to like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why do you deserve somebody like Khadija? Or do you have a mission? Are you putting in work for something? What, what defines your life? That you went to work and came home? Everybody does that. <coughs> that you put food on the table? Animals do that. It, that's supposed to be natural. Some of them are doing that. But and animals do that, provide for their families. What makes you so special that you deserve a Khadija? You're the imam in your family. She verified my truthfulness when the people called me a liar. And again, the Prophet Wasallam told us in many different ways that the more you follow his sunnah, the more you inherit what he inherits. When you about something in life, and some of you, you know this even on a little level. Even with your, your Islam. As long as you were doing negativity, you had a whole lot of friends, a whole lot of help, and a whole lot of company. 
Soon as you try to do something right, even though they know it's right, nah, I ain't with you. And sometimes it's not good enough that they say, I'm not with you. They start working against you. And it's usually the ones you thought will be right along with you. Because when it was all talking, when it was all hypothetical, then they were with you. But when you're doing it, they become your biggest enemies and your biggest opposition. He continues, he said, She supported me with her money, her wealth, when the other people deprived me. Now usually, sometimes us brothers, we sit around and say, man, I want to be a Khadija, I need to be a Khadija. This is the part we talk about, the money part. No, no, the other part, not the other part though. I need me a Khadija. I, I can marry me a older sister, especially she's going to break me off with that bread. Yeah, I need me a Khadija. La white bar. She supported me with her money when other people held back from me. And a lot of you may not know, but when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became a prophet, he ceased being an employee. He stopped working. Can't be a part-time prophet. Well, I'm working right now. I, I, I'm trying to do this business right now. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I give you a revelation later. Let me do this. No. Imagine in this society, because nine to five, you can't do nothing but your job. You spend 16 minutes on a 15-minute break, you might get fired. Hold on, I, I give you some guidance later. When, when, when I get off, where you, where you be at when I get off work? No. Being a prophet, full time. So all of the time, up until the time of the, after the hatred to Medina and, and the jihads and all that, the one who was supporting Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his mission was his wife Khadijah. He stopped working when Revelation came down to him. So for those years, those 10, uh, approximately 10 years, because she died right after the uh, boycott, so it was approximately 10 years that he was a prophet while they were still married, while she was still alive, she was supporting him. She didn't do like a lot of us, like, you know, <clears throat> this prophet thing is all good and all that, but uh, uh, when are you going to bring some food around here? Prophet ain't paying the bills. You marry a sister like that, she's not gonna rock or die, sister. Or either you ain't in no mission. You maybe she tired of sitting you up with the toe jam between your toes playing Xbox and PlayStation. While she come and working hard, it's raining outside, she all drenched, soaking wet. Hey you know, baby. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me pause it. What's up? No, hold on, wait a minute. Stop. <laughs> you want some you want her to ride with you while you play Xbox. You better make it a two-man game so she can play with you or something. But we talk about people who are on a mission. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this Sahaba were the same way. Don't think Khadijah, she's, the, she's at the top of the list. As far as women goes. And in another hadith, there's only one woman that's higher than her. Compared to all of the women on earth, from the time men and women began to populate earth until the day of judgment, there's only one woman above Khadijah, and that's Maryam, the mother of Isa. Other than that, there's no other woman better than her. He continued. The Prophet sallallahu he said, and Allah blessed me to have children with her, whereas he prevented me from having children with other women. Notice he mentioned the children part last. The Prophet sallallahu has very comprehensive speech. A lot of times we get married, and this is a good reason, you know, alhamdulillah, I want to have me some children. You know, I want to get married, you know, I want to have children. Or I want a second, third wife, I want to have some children. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, that's noble. But what are you about as a person? And can she help you in that? That's the ride or die system. Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. 
And she participated in a boycott when they were cut off from the rest of American society, where they was eating leaves and sucking on leather and just everything trying to survive. She was right there with him, riding, <coughs> helping the tracks get some, uh, food and other provisions smuggled in the valley on the down low. Khadijah. And she died as a result of that hard situation. He didn't say, well, I'm just like an old lady doesn't pass. But next. He didn't say that. He will often, how did Hadith start? He will often think about Khadijah. In one narration, the, the sister, Hala, the sister of Khadijah, came in. And she just reminded him of her. And he started crying. And Aisha saw all of this. Like, oh, man, this is stuff. Yeah, Hala. The wife who come here and reminded him of Khadijah. Every time he would slaughter an animal, he would, after when he would divide it up, he would send for us to Khadijah's family and Khadijah's friends. So you see, and we mentioned this last week, this loyalty, this love, this commitment didn't stop when she died. This is the type of relationships we want with our spouses, where the love and the loyalty don't die when the person's physically gone. And we pray that Allah bless us all with ride or die Muslim sisters who try to be like Khadijah. Amen. May Allah make us men who are who are worthy of uh, riding with. Imam Naeem Abdullah of Masjid al Mutmin and Nurzaman Institute is available for speaking engagements. You can contact Imam Naeem Abdullah at the following via telephone at 267 388-0823 or write him at 537 Paulson Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA 15206 or via email at imamnaeem at